Hi there. Hey, welcome to the re-recorded version of week three, because for whatever reason, last week, Zoom didn't record the webinar. I'm sure it wasn't user error. So anyway, here's week three. We're going to re-record it just so I can get it up on the site for those of you who weren't able to join us in person. Um, this is the week where we talk about um, tips and examples of good storytelling. So it's good content. Probably going to be a fairly short week just because we don't have live people right now asking questions. So it'll go a little faster. Um, but if you do have questions that come up while you're watching this, of course, you have my email address. You have my cell phone if you've ever gotten an email from me. So just reach out and I'd be happy to talk. So this is week three. So tips and examples of good storytelling. This is kind of fun. So we've been talking about how you're trying to pull the person into the story with you. But like, how do you actually do that? And how do we know the difference, right? So we're gonna look at some of this. Um, this is a statement that Mac, my co-founder wrote, and I completely agree with it. I think special districts are always a better choice. Um, well, probably not always, but almost always. In Sacramento, I have SMUD, which is a municipal utility district. And where I'm from, I'm used to paying PG&E. And I can tell you the difference between those two for so many reasons, right? So this is the story. So then how do we tell it? So this is kind of fun. This is a short little YouTube video that we're gonna play. This is neat because I know a lot of my districts, they don't have, you know, a big production staff to do like video. I don't have any of that, right? So there are other ways to do it. And I don't know how much this costs, but you can hire people to do things like this too. There are a lot of them on Upwork, a lot of them on Fiverr.com. And so let's just watch this real quick. If you live in South Utah County and get your power from SESD, did you know we've managed to keep your rates the same since March 2009? That's 10 years. And after more than 110 years of reliably serving your community as a not-for-profit power provider, we figured it was time to formally introduce ourselves. We're SESD, South Utah Valley Electric Service District. We happily serve 4,000 customers just like you in South Utah County. SESD provides power to rural and mountain areas, as well as the cities of Woodland Hills and Elk Ridge. Some of our customers even reside in Spanish Fork, Salem, Payson, and Santa Quinn. SESD is as unique as the diverse areas we serve. We're locals, working for locals, and we're a public power company that genuinely cares about giving you the fairest rates possible. With SESD, you only ever pay for the power you use, nothing else. Our service has the personal community touch. Call our office and you'll speak to an actual person, probably even someone you know. And out in the field, SESD linemen are the best of the best. Their deep local knowledge lets them respond quickly and effectively to any situation. When wildfires or snowstorms strike, we're working on the front lines in the toughest conditions. No matter the challenge, SESD has your back. And we don't keep you waiting. We get your power back on, fast. We've been here since the beginning, and we're as excited as ever to power your South Utah County. Give us a wave next time you see us out there in your community. SESD, reliable service, reasonable prices, power to light our future. I really like that. And so that's just the example that we use because it's just so well done. And it didn't require people to be on camera that might be employees but don't wanna be part of a video or something like that. So again, um, I, can, I can send you the company that did that if you wanna follow up with me via email. Um, and, and otherwise there are a lot of people who do that sort of work where it's just illustration type videos and they do really good work. So we've said this so many times, you're like, stop talking about it being personal. But consider things like this, include employees, include board members or volunteer in the story, right? Volunteers or community members are always amazing, of course. And then connect them to the community. And, and of course, the more specific, the better. Real stories are always best. And then make it personal. So here are some things that I like to keep in mind when I'm trying to write a story for whatever reason. Why does it matter to the reader and does it affect them in any way? How do you want them to feel when they've finished reading or hearing your story? And then of course, we've got a lot of content on this in um, our talks on writing for the web because our attention spans are so short. So make it digestible and memorable, right? So you can break things up with headings so people can scan through really quickly, looking for what they want. 
try to keep figures and facts focused and easy to digest. So if you're if you're burying numbers that it's important for somebody to understand inside of a lot of kind of technical language or anything like that, make sure to pull it out and do like an infographic too or something like that. Obviously, always keep your audience in mind. They don't have all the inside knowledge that you have about your district or the district type. And then starting with the lead or the net graph. So I have a background. It, you probably think this is silly because every time I give one of these webinars, I'm like, I have a background in firefighting. I have a background in sign painting. That was, that's next week. If you, if that's week four, um, <laughs> when I said that, which was just a few minutes ago, because I'm re-recording this, um, I have a background in journalism too. I started in newspapers at 14, believe it or not, um, part-time and worked my way through school working at newspapers. So I love the lead because the misspelling makes me just super happy. It's so ironic and fun, but it really is. It's just something to introduce your story. And there's two different types. The summary lead is much more like what you would see in a press release. It's like who, what, where, when, give me the facts, um, give me everything I need up front because I may not read the rest of it. Not much related to storytelling, if, if you can understand, like it's just much more facts, 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 which is fine in some cases, especially if people have a short attention span and they need just some information really quickly. So hard news stories typically this way. Um, the nut graph or nutshell paragraph we're going to talk about in a few. Um, they, they're similar in that way, but the nut graph is much more um, helpful for storytelling versus just fact telling. So the feature lead is a little more like that. The feature lead is like, they call it a delayed lead where it's like you're telling a story to build kind of suspense or curiosity towards what in the heck? Wait, so it keeps the person reading um, and they're getting a main point as they read through the story itself. So this is obviously my favorite. Not that I have anything about against facts because facts are important and we should always use facts, but telling a story around them, I think is just much more compelling. So as a feature lead can be also more emotional. So, um, you know, appealing to empathy and again, connecting them to your district. Another reason I like it, not that I tend to be very emotional or anything like that. Oh, and then they can also pose a question. So asking the question and enticing them to continue reading to try and answer it for themselves. And there's me an emotional cat. <laughs> all right, so here's a feature lead in action. It's all around you all the time, tidily rolled up next to the toilet when you wake up in the morning, handed to you at the corner cafe with your morning coffee, all over your desk at work, my desk at home, and surrounding much of the food you buy at the grocery store before heading back home. Right? So you start to get the picture of like, oh, this is gonna be a story about paper products, I think, right? And this is an example that people use all the time of an amazing feature lead. And then here's the same story that I just took and tried to do it in summary lead style. Due to a shortage of paper goods and in an effort to reduce paper waste, the city has adopted a new ordinance that make grocery stores charge 10 cents per bag. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is never useful because this, this can be useful, especially if you're just trying to get facts in front of somebody. But if you are trying to get them to um, agree that they should be charged 10 cents per bag, if you're gonna try and get them to, in this example, if you're gonna try and get them to, um, you know, buy into whatever it is you're telling them, you need more than just this. But sometimes this is enough. It just depends on the situation, which is why I'm covering both. So the net graph, um, I'm not gonna read every word to you because you can obviously read it faster than I can read to you. But the thing about this is it's the news value of the story. So that's a little different than what we talked about with the summary lead where it's just fact, fact, fact. There's not much of, but why should I care? What's the value of this to me? Why does it matter? So the net graph tends to lean a little more towards the news value. And then I always like to say, this is kind of like the 30 second elevator pitch, right? It lays out the why for someone to continue reading or listening to you. And it's just technical because I'm a journalism geek. It may follow the lead or it can be used as the lead. And so this is just an example of the nut graph in action. And I won't read all the way through this, but you can see I've kind of highlighted, it's like, oh, this is, Water use for retail water agencies. Okay, Governor Jerry Brown, I don't know how I feel about him, but I feel some way, I'm sure. And then Senate Bill 606 and Assembly Bill 1668. Okay, 
meh, I don't really know. Why do I care about assembly bill numbers and everything else? And, and I am guilty of this. I'm always talking about SB 272 because it makes me so cranky, but who the heck cares about, about bill numbers? So here's a different way of leading into this story. A prominent report about a new water conservation regulations passed in May said that there was a statewide mandate not to take a shower and do laundry on the same day and that each person would be limited to using a certain amount of water indoors. Now I'm going, wait, wait, what? I can't do laundry and have a shower? That's crazy. Well, it turns out the report was actually inaccurate, but by reading on, you learn like, well, here's where it was inaccurate, but here's what you really do need to know. And of course you want people to get to that information versus the burr, burr, burr at the top, right? So that's why this one gets a thumbs up. And of course, the famous quote by Maya, and, and it's really true. I mean, in, in all of us, I think we're drawn to people and to companies and brands and organizations that make us feel something, right? Um, and in some cases, you would think, well, if you're a fire district, possibly, or a rec and park district, possibly, that's a lot easier than if you're a sanitary district, right? But any district can do this. You all have amazing stories. and and you can tell them in a way that's really compelling and make people feel connected to you. So storytelling methods. So this is kind of fun. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to introduce a story. And of course, I don't have enough time in 30 minutes to go through an entire like writing exercise on this, but I do have some examples that are kind of fun. So you can start with statement, question, fact, quote, or you can do stories inside of stories, right? Which is kind of what that one um, feature lead sounded like. So as we go through these, just check in with yourself and, and see what you're drawn to, you know, what kind of calls to you, what is like, couldn't care less. Now, this is an actual introduction written by Neil McCormick, who is the CEO of um, California Special District Association. And this was published in a couple of newspapers. And, and it's really good. Do you wonder why your utility rates are going up? It could be an obscure state commission. Um, this is a very balanced introduction. It's, it's factual and um, definitely makes me want to keep reading. I'm like, wait, obscure state commission? Who, I don't, so the state's behind this? But I thought it was my local government raising my rates, right? So, you know, it's like, oh gosh, okay, now I need to read this because I didn't even know. I've been all mad about my, my sanitary rates going up or what have you. So keep in mind all the rest of these examples have the not in pink. He didn't write this. I'm making these up as an example of different ways you could present that same information. Obviously, none of the facts are true. But on average, people in Colorado have seen their water rates go up 8,000% over the last, you know, it's like, wait, what the heck? What? And then you notice at the end, I tucked, where they force agencies to comply without providing any funds to assist them, right? So this is like, of course, this is how you want people to feel. And when I was writing these, Again, these aren't factual, so just keep in mind their examples. But as I was writing them, I was like, well, what do I want somebody to feel? You know? And this one was definitely like, that's why I tacked in that, like, where they force agencies to comply. It's like, girl, wait a minute, it's not my special district's fault. It's the state. Darn state mandates. Um, here's one with a quote. We don't want to pass these costs on to our customers, many of whom are already struggling financially. But the state has given us no choice, said Joe Smith, general manager of Acme Water District. The state mandates just keep coming and there's nothing we or our customers can do about it. So I don't know if you can guess what I'm going for here, but I'm definitely going for empathy. It's like straight line, factual, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's probably factual. I don't know, I don't live in Acme Water District, so I don't know if people are already financially struggling, but. I think people are struggling everywhere. So it's factual, but it's also like pulls on that empathy, but it's also still just like an official statement. It's like, actually, you know, we're in this with you. You know, it's like the state's doing this to us, not doing this to us, but to us, right? So again, it does that kind of broadens the story again a little bit, like we talked about in prior weeks. And then with a story, Mary's been working two jobs for as long as she can remember. As a single mom with two young kids, the rising cost of utilities makes it impossible to meet, make ends meet otherwise. Again, made this up, don't know Mary, um, but very likely is true in just about any district, right? 
So um, again, empathy, but also a connection. If you know that a lot of the audience who may be reading it might be parents of young children, you know, if there's a lot of that in your community, if you have a lot of people working two jobs, right? Any of that sort of stuff, like this is kind of like, oh man, poor Mary, right? So of course, or you could ditch all of that and just use humor. So I actually really, love this. So I'm going to play the entire thing. Um, for those of you who don't know this, CSDA through their districts make the difference campaign does a ton of advocacy work and outreach and stuff like that. And they have a video contest for I think high schoolers to they can win some money or scholarships by, by producing a video about special districts. So I'll just play this. It is so fun. That there is sight to see. Old Sally's house burning up like a match. If only there was some type of help. <laughs> well, Billy Bob Joe, you're in luck today. Now, who might you be? I'm Jordan, and I'm from the future. From the future? I've always wanted to. Anyway, let me show you something from my futuristic digital display. Hey, Billy. This here behind me is a fire station emergency response system that helps with fire-related problems. There are also many other special districts, just as important as this one, including water, irrigation, parks and recreation, and healthcare districts, each playing a part in creating a safe and sustainable community. Now, back to you, Jordan. As you can see, special districts are a vital part of society, and without them, we'd end up in unfortunate circumstances. You know what? I'm gonna start the very first special district here in Hill Valley. Billy, now you go have fun with that. Anyways, you can find out more about special districts at districtsmakedifference.org. Also, share this video along with your friends to raise awareness about these special programs that help our state and other states so much. I'm Jordan from the future, and I hope you enjoy. I love Jordan from the future. I love Jordan from the future. Future, Okay, so anyway, there, that's an example, right, of another way you could produce this. But these kids are doing this with their own technology, right, with their own phones or tablets or whatever. And it's silly, but I love it. it honestly, it makes me almost like cry. I just, it, it's an amazing program. So if you haven't, go, go to districtsmakethedifference.org and go watch some of these kids' videos because they're just brilliant. They're just brilliant. Okay, sorry, break. All right, and come on slide, there we go. So of all the things that we that we looked at, and obviously you aren't here live now because I'm re-recording this, so I can't have this lively chat, which is a bummer, but it was fun. We got to talk about like, what did land with you? What kind of like thinking about how you could use storytelling in your districts, right? And obviously, very obvious statement, it's gonna depend on not just the topic, but also the medium, right? Um, so you've got your story, now what? So this is what, this is weird because I'm saying this is what the next episode is about, our next in the series, but I actually just did it a few minutes ago. So now I feel like I'm slown from the future. No, now I'm slown from the past. Anyway, this is the next topic. So if you haven't watched week four yet, that's what's coming up next. The recording will be up this afternoon. Cost-effective ways to get the word out. And four through six are going to be getting the word out using guerrilla marketing tactics. So if, like I said, if you haven't watched week four, week four is all about community events and things like murals, chalk and paint murals. It's fun, really like hands-on stuff. Then we'll get into social and then we'll go on to some other stuff like web and email and things like that. Use the hashtag special district stories if you're sharing that sort of stuff on social so that we can all be supporting one another and watching for this hashtag so we can share for each other to help spread the word even more. And that's it for this week's content. And again, sorry about the mess up with the recording, but I'm glad there was time to redo it. <sighs> Take care, everybody. <laughs>